It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Wisconsin Lutheran College head women's soccer coach, Maggie Wake. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Brandon. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get into college coaching? Sure. Yeah, um, I think I was a little bit late to the game um, in some matters, but um, really I started coaching um, after my my second ACL tear. Um I was away from the game for a little bit, and my mom is actually the one that encouraged me to reach back out to my club and, you know, begin coaching. Um, so I, my first team that I ever coached was a U10 boys team, um, and that's really when I started to love coaching, and I look back on that experience and just feel so blessed that I had such supportive um, parents of the boys, um, as well as um, my, my parents were supportive of it. And so that's kind of when I realized, like, this this is what I want to do. What was your college experience like at Cardinal Stitcher? Um, it was good. I Unfortunately, I did tear my ACL my freshman year. Um, so I only was able to experience one year of that true competitive collegiate soccer. Um, but I have great memories um, from playing, and I actually still stay in contact with former teammates to this day. Um, I just went to my former roommate's wedding this past summer. So um, still a lot of really great memories and just uh, overall a good experience minus the, the ACL tear, of course. What were some of your accomplishments during your college career? Um, I, I think I started just a couple of games and had two goals. So, I, I mean, I was by no means the, the all-star player um, on the team, but I would say off the field, you know, just having those memories with the girls um, and truly embracing, you know, the grind of being a college soccer player um, is certainly an accomplishment for, for anyone. Of course, coming out of college, what was it like getting into college coaching and what was your first college coaching job? Yeah, so my first college um, coaching position was with Wisconsin Lutheran College. Uh, I was the graduate assistant, and it was a very, very good experience. Um, I was able to step into the role and really, you know, be very hands-on with recruiting, um, practice planning, and training sessions to games. So it was, um, like I said, very hands-on and just a great experience of you know, really embracing what coaching is and um, not just the soccer portion, but also the admin portion as well. So it was very good. What was it like, obviously, getting the job at Barton College as the de developmental coach? It was a really great experience, um, a unique experience at that. Um, you know, that position it was a, a quick choice um, when I was, you know, offered the position. I had just a couple couple hours kind of really to decide. And then I moved across the country um, to a place where I had never been and I didn't know anyone other than the head coach. And so it was a, a time of growth, both professionally um, and personally in the fact that, you know, you're someplace new. You have to you have to buy a car. You have to get insurance for the car. Um, all those things of just growing up and becoming an adult and having all those responsibilities, um, but also taking on a new role, um, you know, Barton being a division two school, um, I got to work with extremely high level players, which was a lot of fun and um, a lot of responsibility. So it was, it was a great experience. Um, I'm very thankful for it. And I still um, talk to quite a few of the players from Barton and, to see what they're doing now and how they've succeeded off the pitch has been just very fulfilling. Of course, growing up in Wisconsin, what was that like, obviously being like, okay, well, I'm, I'm in Wisconsin, but now I'm going obviously to North Carolina where obviously it's way hotter than Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, that's um, always a big change. Uh, I enjoy warm weather, hot weather with that. Um, so it was it was really nice. Um, 
I, I liked moving out there. Um, the reason I moved back is because, you know, I got engaged and he lived here and my family lives here and so does his. So it just made logistical sense to move back. Um, and the week I moved back was actually the week that Wisconsin had that, that polar, polar ice storm and it was like negative 50 and you couldn't go outside. And I just shook my head. I was like, oh man, I should have stayed in North Carolina. <laughs> But um, no, it was good. Um, so good to be here with family, um, especially now that um, my husband and I have our own, our own child. Um, it's obviously been huge to, to be near and dear to them. So what were some things that you accomplished at course at Barton? Yeah, Barton was, like I said, it's division two. Um, we had a really great team. Um, I believe we finished uh, 10, six and two that season I was there. And I don't think I'll ever forget um, that first round of the conference tournament, we played NGU and we went there and we upset them. And man, that was just, just an amazing win. Um, and just the girls persevered and, you know, just a fun team to coach. So it was a great experience at Barton. Like I said, playing with the, you know, coaching those high level players that are just so hungry for the game and, and passionate. Um, so uh, great accomplishments. And like I said, those girls are off the pitch, um, just excelling um, in the world today. So it's been great to see. What was it like seeing it firsthand, obviously the rivalry between Barton and Mount Olive College? Oh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I know we played, it was their senior night when we played them. Um, obviously, you know, the distance between Barton and Mount Olive is so close. So um it's always a fun time to have that rival rivalry game and the girls especially were really into it. And, you know, whether it be social media posts or just things like that, um, the girls really got into it. So it was fun. What was it like returning to Wisconsin Lutheran as the grad assistant? Um, it was good. So when I returned to um, Wisconsin Lutheran College, I actually came back and I was just the assistant coach. Um, and I, I actually had a part or a full-time job elsewhere. And so that was kind of a, um, a different transition because up until that time I had been coaching full-time. And so from that standpoint, it was a lot different uh, because coaching became, you know, that secondary position. And I wasn't able to always make the sessions or games um, because of that full-time role. So from that standpoint, it was um, a change, um, but you know, still good. I was still happy to be in coaching. And, um, you know, with WLC, I had, I had previously coached there. So I knew, you know, I know the admin, I knew the school, I knew what I was um, getting into. So it was good. What was it like, obviously, getting your first head coaching job at Wisconsin? Oh, man, that's just a huge honor and privilege. Um, having coached at WLC previously, like I said, I know the admin, I know what WLC brings to the table and it's been my dream job um, since I was that graduate assistant. So just a really huge honor and privilege and I love WLC. So it's been great. What are some things that you have accomplished so far as the WLC head coach? Yeah, so my first season, unfortunately, was the COVID season. So we really only got eight matches in the spring because our fall season was canceled. Um, but even so, you know, we had three, three girls that were all conference players, um, which is, which is huge for them. And then, you know, this past season, this fall, I think that we really took a, a big step as a program, just becoming more competitive within our conference. Um, you know, we play in a very competitive conference with a lot of great teams. Um, and so, taking that step and becoming competitive in, in every match was the first, the first step in what we needed to do. And, you know, the girls have embraced the changes that I've made and, um, you know, they put forth their best effort and that's, that's all I can ask. Of course, since you said you took over during the COVID season, what has it been like, obviously, as a first year head coach coming in during COVID when obviously we had uncertain certain times? You know, it's, it's taking everything day by day. I think 
you know, when there was that uncertainty, especially for the seniors, um, when they're asking you like, coach, am I going to get a senior year? And you, you can't look them in the eye and tell them yes or no. Cause you don't even know, um, you know, that could be really tough, but I think that, you know, like I said, the support that admin gives you at Wisconsin Lutheran college empowers you to be a strong leader for your team. And I think that, like I said, we took things day by day and we're patient. And eventually, like I said, we got to play eight matches in the spring and um, it was a great experience. And I'm so happy that we were able to give those seniors, even though it wasn't a full season, an abbreviated season, and they were able to play matches. So. Of course, what does a typical game day look like as head coach? That's a good question. Um, I would say game days, definitely starting with, you know, game day text between well, obviously the group chat, it gets blown up. And then as coaches, we kind of text one another to um, finalize anything that we need. We didn't go over the day before. Um, and then for me personally, I always, I, I love coffee and I love Starbucks. So I usually treat myself to a Starbucks coffee um, in the morning. And that kind of gets the, the vibes going, gets the energy up. So I would say those two things are like the consistent right away. Like, you know, it's a game day when you get a game day text and you have a Starbucks coffee. Of course. Can you talk about, of course, the culture that you have helped have built for the Wisconsin Luther soccer program? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when I first came in, obviously culture is a buzzword right now. Everyone's talking about it. Um, but I sat down with the captains and I said, you know, like, what do we want to build here? Let's, let's sit down and let's work on this. Um, and what we came up with is kind of an acronym and it spells out SET. Um, S stands for serve. Um, WLC, our mission statement is all about servant leadership and developing these young student athletes into servant leaders. And so the S stands for serve and we we want to reach out to our community. We want to serve. Um, we have a couple of opportunities to do so this spring. We're going to be working with Lighthouse and also March is reading month. So we've been reaching out to some schools to see if we can get in there and, and read to the kids. So that's the S. The E stands for engage. And what that stands for really is just when we're with the team and even when we're not together, we want to engage in one another's lives. Um, you know, previously I talked about how I have these great memories with the Cardinal Stritch players and I was in at one of my former roommates weddings, you know, you don't get there by not talking to your teammates or not, you know, being part of one another's lives. So the engage is really standing for building relationships with one another um, and, and being there for one another too, because, you know, in the four years that you're, you're in college, um, you go through trials and um you know ups and downs and so when you have that team that you can go to whether you're having a good day or a bad day and they can support you and you know give you advice and and just be there for you um that's so important and so that's that e and then the t stands for togetherness um and that was actually our theme for this year was together um, it's so it's kind of twofold, um, the style of play. We always, we always find players saying together when they're on the field, um, cause we want to work together. Obviously soccer is a very team oriented sport. Um, and the kind of formations that we, we try to embrace and play, you know, you, you, you need to work together to do so correctly. Um, and then off the field, obviously we just, we want to be together kind of getting back into that engage. Um, we want to spend time together, team bonding, all those sorts of things. So that's kind of the three pillars of the base of our culture. Um, but I would say we also, one of the best things that we've done to make us more competitive is we created a competitive cauldron for our training sessions. Um, it's an Anson Dorrance thing. I didn't make it up. I'm not some sort of genius. He, he definitely is. Um, he's one of my favorite coaches. So a lot of the stuff that we do is, is pulled from his podcasts and, and his books. Um, and so the competitive cauldron has, has really helped our training sessions become more competitive and just having the girls have that bit of drive and competing in everything that we do. So. Of course, who are some of the teams that you face in your conference? 
Yeah, um, in the NAC, we have quite a few. So it's CUC, CUW, St. Norbert's, um, they have just added um, this past year. Um, Marion, Lakeland, IIT, MSOE, um, Aurora, Rockford. And I might be missing a few, it's 14 altogether. Of course, what is it like getting to play teams like Lakeland and Rockford? It's good. Yeah, I think, like I said, the, you know, the conference is extremely competitive. Um, MSOE, for example, got an, uh, an AQ, which has been the first time, I believe, on the women's side um, just this past season. So Dominican, you know, won the conference outright, um, but MSOE was still able to go and, and play. And so I think that just goes to show that the, the conference itself is extremely competitive and it just seems to be getting better and better. So it's been a lot of fun um, just to see how we progress. What does the recruitment process look like for prospective student athletes looking to play college women's soccer? Yeah, I think that it's, it's probably a little bit different than what it was um, a few years ago. I would say, you know, you don't, we go to showcases, we go to tournaments, we go to high school games. Obviously that's first and foremost, the best way to recruit is to see people play in person. Um, but we also have nowadays recruiting services um, like NCSA that you know, you're able to view players, film, you're able to see their GPA. Um, some of them will even share transcripts, things of that nature. So you're able to do a little bit of recruiting online um, and so from that standpoint, recruitment has really changed. Um, I think also due to COVID, you know, showcases, some of them are being streamed online now. And so, you know, if you're not able to make it, say it's out of state, you, you can pay for that streaming service and, and still see matches. So the recruit, recruiting game, I think, has, it's always changing. And um, this year has been no, no different um, with, with COVID kind of mixing things up. So. Of course, as a head coach, and when it comes to recruitment, do you still look at obviously the North Carolina area, since obviously that's where you came from as a coach, even though obviously in Wisconsin, you would still have to pay out of state tuition and that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. I have a, a soft spot for, for any North Carolina players, of course, um, and we, you know, we recruit all states, um, on my current roster, we have someone from South Dakota, Indiana, New Mexico, Colorado. Um, and so we, you know, we don't say no to any state. Um, really, we, we enjoy the different, different ideas, different, um, backgrounds that people come from. And, um, I think it just makes us a better team. So. What does the recruitment process look like for prospective student athletes that are going on the official visit? Um, I would say, you know, that's with the official visit, that would mean, you know, that we can pay for, let's say they're coming on campus, um, we can pay for their lunch. Um, and so that would be really kind of the big difference between official and not official. Um, but I would say it's different for D3 than D2 and D1. Um, and I think it looks a little bit different because, you know, for D3, the official and non-official is just the difference of, of paying for things, so. Of course, on the official visit, does prospective student athletes get to obviously see the uniform that they'll be wearing for the next four to five years? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, our locker room, we always have, uh, the girls' lockers set up with their their kits. Um, we have three different colors, obviously white, black, and green. So those are all placed in the lockers. So um, prospective student athletes are are able to see the lockers and you know, kind of envision this this would be what it would look like if I played here. So, what is it like as a head coach, obviously seeing those athletes? obviously try on the uniform and obviously see the uniform and see if they want to represent, obviously, Wisconsin Luthaders. I'm not going to lie, Brandon. I've never had a student athlete actually put the jersey on. They only, they look at them. They just pull them out and they look at them. They, I've never had someone be like, hey, can I try this on? I know that's a thing, though, because I know 
football players do that and they tweet about it. So I've seen it, but for whatever reason, um, girls never try them on. I don't know. It's not their thing. Of course, what advice would you give high school athletes that are looking to go either D1 or D2? D1 and D2, um, I would say make sure you're working with, you know, your club coach um, and getting your name and film out there um, early, um, especially for those D2s, D1s, um, because they're making decisions earlier um, than, you know, perhaps a D3. So just making sure that you have your ducks in a row um, and making sure that you're contacting the right people. Of course, what advice would you give those players that are transitioning from obviously and that are looking for at D1, D2, and D3 schools to see which fit best for them? Uh, could you repeat that question? What advice would you give players that are looking at obviously going to a D1, D2, or D3 school to see which one fits best for them? Uh, great question. Um, I always tell all my athletes, um, you know, when you visit a school, make sure it's the best fit for you, whether you were to play soccer there or not. Um, you know, make sure academically and culturally it's it's the right fit for you. And I think that the best way to do that is to visit the school and, you know, kind of go with that gut feeling. You know, does this feel like home? Can you picture yourself here? Do you feel comfortable? Um, questions like that, that will lead you to the right spot. Um, and then of course, you know, make sure you have that relationship with the coach, um, whether it be the assistant or the recruiting coach, um, make sure you know, you know, who you're going to be working with, um, and that you can trust them. Of course, what advice would you give future college coaches looking to get into women's soccer? Um, definitely make connections. It's, it is a lot of who, you know, um, that will help you out. Um, but also, you know, don't, don't be shy um, to reach out to people and just talk to them, uh, learn about their experiences. I think that that's one of the best things that I did is just reach out to coaches and just have that curiosity of, of learning, you know, what they've done and how they got to where they are um, and really just pursue it. You know, if you want it, you, you got to go get it and um, it can be done. What advice would you give first-time first head coaches just like yourself? That's a great question. Um, you know, I did a lot of reflecting after the first, the first season, and I think just give yourself some grace. Um, things don't change overnight, um, but the little things that you're doing consistently, um, they will add up and they'll manifest themselves, um, but it will take some time. And so just give yourself some grace, even if things aren't perfectly the way that you want them to be right now um you can get them there so i definitely need to take some of that advice <laughs> that's great advice where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the wisconsin luther soccer program at yeah um wlc women's soccer we're on twitter and instagram at wlc underscore women's soccer um and then i am on twitter and instagram as well I believe my Twitter handle is Coach Maggie um, for Twitter and Instagram. I'd have to double check. Thank you again, Coach Maggie Welch, for your interview. And best of luck in your future as the Wisconsin Luther's head women's soccer coach. Thanks so much, Brandon. Thank you for your time. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Maggie, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Thank you, Brandon. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.